first thing you do when you get the signs is they need to be cleaned. There's a lot of organic matter. You can see a lot of lichens on the sign. We use this fungicide mold control. We just got bought, buy it at Home Depot. Spray it. Get the signs nice and wet. Then use a painter's tool and you dig out the, the excess paint that's in the lettering. You scrape off all the lichens with the flat edge here. Use one of these wire brushes to continue to get the paint out and then you let it dry. Once it dries, more paint will flake off and you just use the painter tool with the little edge here to get as much off as possible because you want to have a nice clean dry surface for the new paint to stick to. After the sign is nice and dry, we go to the next step and the next step is to sand the top the top is where the water would end up sitting and it often has a lot of uh, wear. So you want to sand the top and round the edges so that the water will flow off the sign. We want to also sand any place in the letters where there's exposed wood to make it nice and smooth so that the paint will, will fit. Then you need to get off all the, the, the dust from the sandpaper and then you can go to the next step. The next step is to take uh, some rotted wood restorer. Any place that there's exposed wood on the edges, you, we're going to want to use this. So we'll take a little bit of this, and what it does is it seals it. It hardens this so that it's going to take the paint better, but it's also going to hopefully stop the rotting and make these last a little longer. With these restored signs, some of them are quite old, so and they've been out in the weather you know a long time so we want to make sure that we get all of it covered you wait till it dries only about four to six seconds and then you put it on again until until you've put enough coats on that it remains shiny once it's shiny it shows that it's absorbed all of the um, wood hardener that it that it can you also do the ends and if you've got some really bad, um, like a lot of lettering showing, you can uh, do around the letters as well. The other place you want to do is you want to do the two holes, the two holes that were um, where the screws were. Um, so this is, yeah, I think I could go with one more coat. This is still pretty shiny, I mean pretty dull, but now I think that's what we need. Okay. So then what we have to do is we have to go to the, um, to fill any of the holes. So on this particular one, we're going to use this Bondo wood hardener. It's really stinky. It takes about 30 seconds before it hardens up. So you put a little bit in the cup. You take the stuff that makes it get hard, you squeeze a tiny bit in, you mix it up. You have to do it pretty fast because it will harden quickly. I have these coffee stirrers that I use. Put the stuff in. You want to do both screw holes, and if there were any other holes on the, on the machine, and you do front and back, well, I'm just going to do the front today. And then what you do is you can take another, and you just try to get it smooth. Don't worry if you get a little bit on the artwork, because it can, you can take a razor blade, and it chips right off. And very gently scrape it off any of the artwork. And that's the next step. This is a very old sign. Uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the identifying um, information for the plant, the Latin name and the regular name. But I'm using it as a demonstration because it does have carpenter bee holes in it. When you have carpenter bee holes, what you want to do is you want to just take some steel wool and the paintbrush, the end of the paintbrush, and just jam it in. You want to fill it as much as possible. 
and it's going to go both ways. I probably took too big a piece here, but you want to just fill it up. And you just keep pushing it in until there's no place left to go. And then you would do it for each hole. They usually tend to be connected, so you could push it both ways. And you just want to give some filler in there. Then you would put the Bondo that we used on the other, and you put the Bondo over the top of this. And that would be um, how you would fill these holes. The next step will be to do some priming. Any place that there's raw wood, any place where the edges are showing. So this would go right over the top of the what we have done with the wood hardener. Doesn't have to be, doesn't matter if they're, it doesn't have to be exact. We would also, on this particular sign, I would probably do the letters a little bit because there's so much raw wood on the edges and I want that primed. You don't have to get everywhere in the letters because that's going to be covered with different amounts of paint. You want the brush strokes to all go one way, but it's important not to let any um, paint pool in the letters because otherwise they're, it's uneven and it gets harder to apply the, uh, the white paint. So this is what we would, we would uh, do. And just really doesn't have to be perfect. It's just enough to get the, um, the raw wood uh, covered. And then the top. And then you want to do the edges as well if there's any raw wood. And of course you're doing the same thing to the back. Once the Bondo has dried, you want to take a piece of sandpaper uh, with a, a fine grit and just do a little uh, sanding on it so that the paint will stick a little bit better. The challenge of the process is that everything needs drying time. Everyone, everything needs a minimum of four hours to dry. So there are so many steps. You can't just, I, at the beginning I thought I could just get, you know, 20 people together for four weekends and get the whole project done. It can't work like that because everything needs to dry at least four hours and it's better if it dries overnight. So uh, the next step after we have, um, after the primer dries is to put the uh, brown paint. So this is the paint that all the signs use as the background is to put the brown paint over, um, over the primer. So you have to do this side, you have to do the back, and you have to do all the edges. So you can't do it all at once. Uh, I usually lean them up against my uh, railing there. I'm going to need to repaint my kitchen uh, because there's brown paint all over everything once this is completed. Um, so you just put a bunch of paint on, you fill in everything, you want to make sure again that all the brush strokes go in the same direction. I usually take a little paintbrush if there's some pooling and get the pooling out so that we don't have uh, puddles in the letters. And then one more time with the brush stroke in the correct direction. Once this dries, there'll be a second coat of this paint put on, and um, then we'll be ready for the lettering. After the second coat of brown paint is on and it's dry, we take the signs that are being restored over to Betty Knight if they need uh, some touch up on the artwork. So this is a sign that's already been touched up. What Betty did was 
uh, take Jim Fletcher's artwork and paint over the places where the bondo was, because a lot of times the bondo is right through the middle of the artwork, and just put some more color and repaired where the um, uh, paint was chipping off. Then, or, or where there was a bleed very often. There's yeah, or brown, where there was a take the bleed. Nice you could, roundness or a you could see on color. this one that this is a very old in the middle, mm -hmm. and it was uh, in really rough shape. Mm -hmm. So this is one that Betty did. Then it comes back to me, and I paint over the, um, the, the words uh, and then put them back on with a uh, oil paint ink pen. The thing to remember is these are signs. They're going to be up high, and it doesn't matter if the printing or the artwork or any of it is perfect. It cannot be seen. So little details like messy handwriting is, is going to be okay. So to make uh, the letters reflective, we use reflective highway paint. And this is what you see on the roads. You just put some in a cup, put your brush in. It's a slanted brush, it's an angled brush. And what I do is I take the short end and I put a lot of paint on and I go in and just, and then you just want to fill up the, the edges. If you get a little extra, that's what all this is on the, <laughs> um, and you just nice and smooth. You can use a lot of paint. There's going to be two coats. So, uh, you just want to get it pretty well coated for the first time, like this. And you're going to go down like this. And then you're going to go here. Now, there's always going to be a mess up like that. You can either get it off with your finger, or we can touch it up later with brown. There's always a touch up process after the whole thing is over. So you want to do each letter doesn't take long once you get the hang of it. So this is coat number one. All right, almost done. Good to look at it from every angle and make sure you got up to the edges. Again, don't forget it's going to be on a sign that's high up. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. Once it dries overnight, the next step is to put a second coat. You want to put a second coat on nice and thick. Second coat goes on much easier because you know what you're doing. You, know, you don't have to worry about getting all the way up to the edges. And once you have your second coat on, let me get this. I'm going to do one letter here just as a demo. Here it is. Once you get your second coat on nice and thick, you take the glass beads. These are There's already some glass beads in the paint. But this is extra glass beads. And you just take a spoonful and you fill each letter all the way up. And then you make sure, you know, be generous because we're going to collect all these extra beads. And then you push it down and you let it dry again overnight. The next morning, what you do is you just take dump the excess beads, you sort of wipe off any that are on the edges. And then we recycle these beads back into the uh, jar so that we can use them again. You can see it's nice and reflective. And then we're done with that next portion. So the next, the next step is you need to seal the artwork because this is done in tempera or paints and it would uh, not hold up outside. 
So we use this universal clear Rust-Oleum uh, and we like to use the semi-gloss, which is what this is. Um, you would cover this, the, you can't, if you get the, uh, this on the beads, it will compromise, it will make them so they're not as reflective. So you have to be careful not to get any of this on the letters. So typically th these would be covered up with a piece of paper and then you would just spray this on, uh, let it dry, put a second coat on and then you're done. So the final step, or the second to last step, is to um, pre-drill the holes. I found that if we do it ourselves, as opposed to having, well, is to pre-drill the holes so that they're in a good spot uh, for when um, they get put back up. The sign is 36 inches. You want to go at approximately 18. It can be an inch on either side. And you want to be really careful to avoid drilling where there was bondo previously. So if you have to be, I can tell right here by feeling this that the bondo is here. So I'm gonna drill right next to it, about an inch down. And you want one on the top and one on the bottom. Then the final step is to take a picture of uh, focusing in on the artwork and of the whole sign and then you deliver them to town hall. All right, when we need a new sign, we have to get the lettering on. So these are uh, brass stencils. The town has two sets now. I bought a new set. So we would have enough duplicates. And you just slide them in together and you get the word. You line it up with the bottom of the, um, of the board, make sure it's straight, and then you just take a pencil and go around the outside. Did you do most of that work? I did all of these, all of them. I did all the big signs and somebody else did the little signs. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get a basic outline so the person who does the actual routing will have a guideline of knowing where to go. And so this is going to be Railroad Street because Railroad Street, we need a new one there. So you take it off and then you just have to connect the places so that it's all one. So once the stencil is on, you bring it over to Mike Shank or whoever's doing the routing. He will route the letters out so that they're nice and deep and then we'll be able to sand it and paint it.